Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show, we're talking about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Jack Ryan Season 3, Episode 2. Another great episode. A lot, of really, uh, a lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Some very, very interesting developments went down in this episode. Well, first and foremost, let's start off with uh, one of the big reveals I love that ends up being that uh, President uh, Kovacs uh, right hand guy like head security guy Roddick is behind the whole thing like I knew it he was just a little I brought it up last episode I thought he pulled the trigger a little too quickly like I said there's some leeway where you're like right he has a gun in his hand you don't know if he's going to shoot you but it's like the fact that you just happen to kill the guy he's not even arrested it's just he killed him it's like once again the scene setup made it seem like okay maybe there's plausible deniability but I was just like ah man it just didn't sit right with me wasn't expecting him to reveal that so quickly I thought maybe that's something that kind of got revealed a couple episodes later it's like no and interestingly enough, we find out, well, it seems like he knows the guy who actually pulled the trigger. And turns out the lady that was assistant with the whole thing, turns out that's his wife. I was like, interesting. So I wonder, are they like sympathizing? Because the guy, the, the actual shooter was like, they're old friends. So what is that all about? And obviously it makes sense because it's like, right, you got to kill, like take care of all loose ends. Even if there was some aspect of like, well, they traced it back to this particular guy. Well, he's dead now, so... There's nothing that they can kind of really follow up, up, follow up or follow through in that regard. I guess just in case they look beyond the guy they set up to be the killer, the actual killer is gone. And with him dead, there's no... Maybe the connections to Radic are so buried that you would not be able to just stumble across that. You'd have to super go out of your way to find it. And even then, it must be buried enough for him not to uh, have to worry about that. But enough just to kill the guy just because, hey, can't have the... Well, because the guy was getting paid to do it. So, it's like, yeah, you get the other half of your money. So, it's not like he's someone who truly believes in this cause. He's just someone that's like, yo, he's, he's a mercenary or he's a contract killer. So, unless it was someone that was truly believed in the cause, you don't want to keep him around type of situation. So, it's sad that uh, people, someone so close to the uh, president of uh, the Czech Republic is uh, doing all this. I mean, it's like her right-hand guy, like her, her head of security. She's even over there at his fam uh, with his wife and daughter. It's like, oh, uh, makes that betrayal sting that much more. I thought that was such, like I said, especially her reveal of it being like, oh, because like we saw her, uh, Reddick early in the episode killed the, the actual shooter. But I was like, yeah, but what about the lady that's involved? Is she not going to have issues with this? Oh, of course you're not going to kill her. She's your wife, so... Like I said, that was uh, interesting. But what I also like, too, is that um, President Kovic, she's not... Uh, she sees through all the smoke and mirrors. She, Especially when she ended up talking to the new minister of defense in Russia, who is Alexei. It turns out he's behind all of this, too. Like, what, I don't know if he's, like, the main, main person. When, I brought this up last episode. I knew it had to be, like, some dissension amongst the, like, ranks of officials and stuff like that. But I was like... I was curious who was it going to end up being, but he he later on talks with uh, President Kovacs, and he's like, hey, the deals you made with the former, uh, now deceased Minister of Defense, yeah, those deals aren't going to be honored, because now, uh, it's like, because she's like, oh, are you going to pull back from Ukraine? And the guy was like, no, we kind of, we're going to keep mowing forward with that. Now, you, on the other hand, because she's worried that, like, obviously, it's not going to stop with Ukraine. It's like, then you're going to start etching closer and closer into, you know, on a very specific, you know, aspects of uh, Europe. And then you start heading our direction. But it's like, yeah, as long as you kind of back out from the NATO situation, then we're all, essentially, we're all Gucci. But if you kind of side with NATO, then we're going to have a big issue. So... But she saw through, like, well, they didn't even see through the threat. It's like he legitimately made that blatantly clear and threatened her, her in the country. But she was immediately like, she didn't believe that the Americans were behind this. Because the moment they were like, yeah, they said that Americans are behind it. She's like, yeah, I, I bet the Russians did say that, didn't they? And now she knows for sure. She's like, no, I know that they did this. Because it's like, regardless of who the shooter is, whether it was an American who actually pulled it or whether it was someone else, her dad is saying, like, they're going to use this as an excuse to do what they want to do. And she sees 
that as well. Like they've set this whole thing in motion because now it puts her in a position where she will have no choice but to rely on NATO considering the moves they make. And that in turn is going to make them go like, okay, I guess we're going to, you made your decision. We're going to have to make ours. So they're putting her in an impossible situation. And her father says, you just have to do what you're supposed to do as president of this country. You have to put the lives and safety of this country and its people first. So it means probably going in with the whole NATO situation, which later on uh, we have Wright telling um, Greer to come here to kind of make sure that kind of all gets super copacetic. It's interesting how Greer kind of finds himself in the middle of those situations. Like uh, the president, I, I mean, obviously like the CIA had vested, well, U.S. in particular had vested interest in like the Venezuelan situation playing out, the, you know. So Greer kind of being connected to... Uh, Oh, God, I'm blanking on her name. The woman that was running against President Reyes last season. Um, he kind of was connected to her, and now he's going to be connected. Well, I mean, she ended up winning the election, so he's connected to one president, and now he's going to be connected to like the president of uh, the Czech Republic once again, being in that situation of CIA as well as USA... Um, vested interest make sure that we're getting what we want because we have a vested interest in this whole situation so well especially considering like at the obviously he's not at the well in the grand scheme of things he's at the dead center of everything uh jack but at all you know so that kind of puts him obviously on the u.s's um problem to deal with and it seemed like earlier on in the episode Wright was kind of getting uh ripped apart by Miller for making that it's like right not only did his whole situation kind of go sideways now one of our agents is kind of out there in the cold and saying it's like right if you don't rein him in it won't just be him that's kind of left out in the cold or no it's not only going to be him on a chopping, chopping block it's going to be you so her and Greer have to work together which neither one trusts the other to the point that Wright had one of their tech people checking his phone for incoming calls, even saying, like, right, you're going to get permission to check into his personal email, too. But Greer was smart knowing, like, right, he knew what he knew that his connection to Jack would make it so that, yeah, her in particular, who didn't care too much for Jack and is kind of hesitant around him, too, would uh, check into it. So that's why when he was in Rome, or specifically, like, uh, when he was in Italy, he ended up having a broker kind of be the middle person to pass on a message and some money, which Jack ended up getting later. So, But it's a situation of Greer made it clear, like, I'm not here for you. I'm here to make sure that there's someone on Jack's side to bring him in from the cold from all of this. So that's like my only reason. And she's like, right, we don't have to like each other. And it seems like Greer has even more reason not to like her because the, what was it, Koresh? The situation that led him to Jack's, uh, him over being the, uh, Jack's boss in season one, the circumstance we learned about later on that led him to that desk, she apparently, he blames her saying like, right, you could have handled that a little differently. She's like, yeah, but you, you definitely screwed that, the pooch on that situation. It's like, she's like, things could, he's like, I had no choice. It's the choices I made. She's like, yes, but a different choice could have been made, which he was like, quick to be like, Okay, bet. I see how that is. Let's see how true, like, you know, it's easy to make those type of decisions and say that, all that behind a desk. Now that you're out in the field, let's see what choices you make and how, what the fallout in, of them end up being, so. But, uh, what I thought was so interesting is the person, Jack, that kind of, I wasn't expecting that. Like, obviously, they went through the list of people. Like, oh, here's some contacts that have, like, U.S. connections that, uh, Jack might turn to. It's like, oh, number four on the list. None other than Tony. I was like, wow. I wasn't expecting that. It's like, even Greer's like, yeah, Jack's not going to turn to Tony because Tony's going to be super reluctant to help him considering, like, yeah, Jack was super wanting to put a bullet in him. I thought that was so interesting, bringing back, like, a character, like, Tony was in, like, what, maybe one? He was in definitely at least one, maybe two episodes, but it might have only been one. I can't remember now. It's been a, because uh, I did rewatch season one, but it's been a little while now. Um, either way. Uh, so I thought that was so fascinating. And Jack, when he found out that it was Tony, and Tony be like, what? No, hug is like, uh, you, you, what, you expected some love loss. But luckily in a situation, you have to change, uh, 
considering their circumstances, Jack had no choice but to rely. I mean, especially because this, like, he probably, well, he knew Greer's the one that kind of set him up with all of this. So, um, I'm, it's, I think that's why Greer specifically chose Tony because it's like, right, he'd be the last person that Jack would actually go to and he would have every reason not to help Jack. So, but they do eventually go talk to Tony and uh, Greer's playing like the rough guy being like, yo, where's, um, where's Jack at? It's like, yeah, you know, he wouldn't come to me. So, and even Jack was surprised to know that Greer was here, but it's because Greer needed to keep an eye on right and make sure she try try to make sure she didn't get too close. Uh, especially complicate circumstances because Constantine, the guy who killed Yuri, the one of the people that's after Jack after last episode, I thought he was like with the Greek police or whatever. It's like no, he's from the Ru he's he's Russian. Uh, he's with uh, he's from the uh, Russian embassy, but apparently Greer's had run-ins with him. It's like yeah, the guy thinks he's smarter than he actually is, but he is super dangerous. So we do have to be a little weary and careful around him. So. Because he followed them to Tony's place, and he made sure to roll deep with a whole bunch of police. Because I want to say, Tony, I think it was Tony that said, like, yeah, Constantine is a scary guy. Plus, he kind of runs things here, even though he's from the embassy. Like, even the Greek police apparently shit themselves around him. So, he gets to have a lot of sway. Hence why he was able to roll deep with a whole entire team. Yes, there's been, like, a red notice put on um, Jack. But still, because uh, apparently that wasn't, well, the Greek, Constantine said we did that, but it, like, kind of referencing like the Russians, but I think it's more specifically, um, like the, the Greek police aren't going to like, at least that chief in particular, isn't going to like say much to uh, Constantine because he holds all the power in this situation because Greer tried to be like, yo, like the guy that was killed, he was a Russian nuclear scientist uh, and even turned to him and be like, oh, did you pull the trigger? It trigger? In fact, he did. Well, we know that Jack did take a picture of him, but I might have, that was probably just him taking a picture of the license plate. Maybe it wasn't even necessarily taking a picture of Constantine because he didn't send it to anybody. He definitely couldn't send it to Greer because that would have been a whole issue within itself. So that never happened. So I guess that's for later on when he's like looking stuff up. But maybe that's what that was about. Luckily, they didn't find uh, Jack. Uh, at Tony's place, but I also think it's interesting too that uh, it's like yeah, Jack had to go as far as thanking Tony. He's like, oh, you're a brother. It's like I know that's gonna make you feel all kinds of weird, but once again, uh, being kind of burned uh, kind of puts you in a situation where you kind of have to uh, you can't be too choosy about your bedfellows in uh, in this type of situation. So, but I also love the twist where right, it's like oh, she uh, the moment she rolled up on. Uh, Greer with the the uh, things he got from that shop, he threw them away. But she got either those were the exact ones he threw away, which I thought was like oh super wasteful. I was like, well, I guess you could give it to some random person on the street. But what random person on the street is going to take food from some stranger? Like, yeah, I'm not going to eat these here. Uh, you know, trying trying to uh, take care of his health and everything. But yeah, the moment she rolled up with that, I was like, she found out. It's like oh, she already knew, but she probably didn't have any full confirmation because she did have someone following. Uh, Greer, but it's probably not till like after checking into it a little bit more, she found out exactly how much he was sending Jack, which is like, hey, I can't trust you, but I know I can use you, so hence why he's going to the Czech Republic to really um, handle the whole situation with uh, the president. And obviously, she doesn't tell Miller what's what, but it's like, right, if Jack's really going to do, he's after what you're saying he really is, and because uh, I love the fact is that she's like, right, that uh, Jack can't keep thinking that he can kind of go off and do whatever he wants to without really kind of basically suffering the consequences or whatever. And I love Greer be like, yeah, I was naive enough to think that at one point in time that you can kind of rein Jack in and not just do whatever the hell he wants to. It's like, been, Greer's like, I've been through that. Two big situations already. I'm not naive enough. Like, you're new to this. You're naive enough to believe that you can kind of rein Jack in. You can't, so... Then on the Russian side of things, uh, we kind of obviously dip back, back and forth a little here and there between 1969 and the aftermath of all those scientists getting killed. The whole them being traitors thing, I was like, wait, what's that about? Maybe there's context to that. Like maybe a little bit of that conversation between uh, Sokol and um, Luca 
because I, I forgot to talk about it. Like that guy was named Sokol because that was probably like his code name. It probably wasn't his. I kept thinking like, well, why aren't we mentioning the guy that it's most likely named after? But it's like Greer did because the name of the episode is Falcon. Apparently, that's what Sokol is. It's, it's I think Russian for Falcon. But that that was most likely that guy's code name. It probably wasn't his actual legitimate name, which I thought it was. But um. I didn't catch the whole, like, oh, they're all traitors. Or was it, like, we're painting them as traitors? But one of the guys was like, no, these people were here. We were going to be heroes because of what they were going to, I guess, build and stuff. But uh, Luca ended up kind of having to give that order. So I guess it kind of falls on him. And he takes up a whole bunch of personal items from the people and returns it to their respective family members. Which one of the people is like, I know who you are. I know what you did. Murder. So... I guess war got around about what he did, that it was his, like, order or whatever. But we also get the reveal that the guy that I was like, that's definitely got to be Luca, because like I said, I didn't want to look into it. I think even in an IMDb, like, x-ray thing, it doesn't say his name, at least at the time it didn't. I think it probably said this last time, because we only knew Luca's first name, I believe. And so, but it's like, yeah, he's Luca. I also didn't know that that actor um, who plays the older Luca, I was like, why does he look so familiar? Oh, God, I'm blanking on his character's name, but he was in his, uh, the first season of his Dark Materials. He was one of the Egyptians. Uh, Serafina's ex, they had a child together. That guy. Uh, and that's what threw me, because, like, obviously in that, he has, like, a, a pretty big beard. He's clean-shaven in this, so that's why I didn't recognize him at all. But I kept being like, he does seem familiar, and I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting. Um, but, yeah. He also saw through Alexi because Alexi's like, oh, yeah, the Americans did it. But then, like, Luca's talking to him alone. It's like, okay, you got that job. But if you want to keep it, you might want to be more careful about it. He's like, I know, like, the fact is, I know that trail that connects to the shooter. Uh, it's like, yeah, I know that was fabricated, that it wasn't the Americans that did it. I know that was us. So, And so later on, he wants to talk to Luca. And it's like, right, I want to earn your respect. He's like, right, you want me to blindly give my loyalty to you because he's like, right, I didn't like the previous minister of defense. He was a piece of shit, but I don't like the way that was handled. He's like, I understand. Um, he's like, but uh, you are someone that's respected. And once again, this he's it's all about doing what's right for the country. And that's why Luca kind of did what he did in the past because it was like a... Not maybe not even like you 100% believed in that, but it was because hey, this is what's necessary for the, the future of this country. And I love the reveal later on when we find out Luca's the inside person, the one that uh, because I forgot to talk about it, but uh, last episode Yuri said that someone told him that the Americans were going to come and, and he would not give up the name of the person who set this all in motion. And he's like, I can't. I thought it was just for like, oh, like, you know, once again, I, I need this leverage, but it's because of who Luca is. It's like, we can't let anyone know that it was Luca because he's seen, viewed in a certain light. And if the truth came to light, it'd be pretty massive. So he's pretty high up there where you want to, you need to protect his anonymity. But that was interesting because Jack is going to try and drag him out into the light uh, to get revealed because he left messages for him. But it's like, oh, he can't really get back to you because probably too many eyes on him, especially because Alexi wants to like keep him pretty close. So, But I can only assume that's because tying back to all that stuff in... 1969, I think he has a lot of regrets about how that was handled. And regardless of the reasoning behind it and all that, I think he is someone that uh, doesn't want to make that mistake again. And does believe that who, these people who believe what they're doing is for the greater good of the country. Like, he doesn't buy into that, even though they think he does. Like, I think he just has a lot of regrets about how things were handled back then, how he handled things. And he doesn't want, he wanted to try and... Um, stop all this from happening he wanted to probably save as many lives as possible because he doesn't believe in this but he probably has to pretend like he believes in it just for that um, whole situation so but uh at the end of the episode we have jack meeting up with mike 
And obviously Mike is giving him kind of the conversation about like, right, I get it. You're kind of going on your own lone wolf. You're kind of running from the CIA. He's like, I'm not running from the CIA. It's like, yeah, then why are they chasing you? He's like, yeah, I get it. You, you know, they kind of screwed you over, but that's the politics of it. You can do a lot more good from the inside than the out. But considering everything going on, Jack, it's just kind of like, right, they, eh, he's a little pissed because it's like, he has every right to be peeved because it's like, yeah, you kind of burned me on that. And I know I'm right. And Jack can be very, very stubborn when he not even just believes he's right, knows he's right. So got to drag, uh, um, unbeknownst to him, Luca into the light. So to try and find out how much Luca really knows about all of this and how he can stop this before things continue to escalate, which they will. So. It is definitely going to be really, really interesting to see where the next episode takes us going forward with all of this. But uh, really, that's all I wanted to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.